Welcome back to Third Phase of Moon. Blake Cousins along with the panel tonight. Brent Cousins, Apollo Asteria, and Dr. J. We're looking at videos from around the world. This one from New York City. Take a look. There we go. We're looking at this video. It's making the rounds on the internet seen tens of thousands of times. We're going to look at it closer tonight and give our opinions of what we're looking at, including new UFO videos from around the world. Uh, Brent, you brought this to my attention first. Your thoughts on it? Yeah, like you said, it's a kind of everybody's looking at this video and th thinking that this is the, r the real deal. What we know so far is that we know how things work and we're looking at this really closely and we're seeing manipulation, in my opinion. We're seeing kind of the tracking and the locking that you do maybe in After Effects and you see it losing its match. Unfortunately, in my opinion, I think this is definitely a fake. You know, when I first look at this, it looks really incredible to me. Like, it almost looks like something out of Dune, the way the edges on the ship are curved, the craft or whatever it is. But, you know, what gets me is why is it just hanging there? It's just kind of hanging there and sort of spinning around. And I don't know. But uh, it definitely looks cool at first. But I just don't understand why it's hanging there like that. You know, when I'm looking at this a little closer, uh, I think Brent's proper on the language it just kind of stands out that the the locking tracking system falters and then you see some imperfections especially when it takes off at a super fast rate of speed uh, again a kind of an indicator but uh, i think i think what we're looking at again is manipulated dr j your thoughts on this one you know first i got excited and thought this is very similar to tr3b or the belgian ufo that was very thick photo caught in but then I started to look more closely. It actually looks fairly small. And I started to think, is it a drone? But there's no rotors for it, like a quadcopter. But at the same time, it's still fairly small to me. So is it a model? I don't, I'm not convinced. Oh, we're losing Dr. J here, but it, it seems that uh, the people in Mexico are picking up on this and they're asking if this is a, some kind of UFO captured. And we're looking at the people, they're, uh, there's the social media you might want to reach out to them and maybe they'll come forward and share their original uh, metadata from the video to uh, back up their claims but again at one point it seems right when it takes off that you almost see it disappear for a split second again maybe bad rotoscoping yeah all the above people say that uh, there's so much cgi out there and how could he tell if a ufo is real well these are the telltale signs right there when he sees something like this and he see that the locking is not correct and they're really trying to do a good job they're moving from left to right trying to make it seem like it's in a real action but again my opinion a false new video coming up check it out just out of puna hawaii So basically, uh, a fleet of UFOs right here on the big island of Hawaii. People were looking up in the night sky and they captured it on film. A lot of people are speculating that this is Starlink. And I did some research. We uh, looked up any kind of Starlink ac activity during the hours that this was captured last night. And none of that was in the area. And obviously, it doesn't look like Starlink to me. What we're looking at is a cluster of UFOs at high altitude. And Puna is a very kind of rural area of the Big Island. There's not much activity out there, and I don't see any kind of amateur drone people out there la launching a bunch of stuff up there. What's going on is something unexplained at this moment. Yeah, good call on that, Blake. We know Puna very well. Again, we've lived on this island quite some time. This place isn't known for drone shows or anything like that. What these guys are capturing is something unknown. We're looking at, again, a fleet of UFOs kind of is it behind the clouds or in front of the clouds? It's really hard to tell, but they're traversing up there. The big question is, what is it? 
Yeah, you know, what's really fascinating about this to me is that, you know, doing the UFO congressional hearings, or I'm sorry, the UAP congressional hearings, they talked a lot about most of the sightings happening in Hawaii, or a majority of them. So there's something about that, whether it's the volcanic activity that has this piezoelectric energy, maybe it, like, attracts this sort of phenomenon. Who knows? But definitely very interesting. Volcano activity or something that could be ours, some kind of UFO asset? Dr. J? Well, first, let me piggyback off the Hawaii thing. I think Hawaii's always been a huge hot spot and will continue to be so. Not only because of the volcanic activity that's constantly erupting, but you're surrounded by oceans. You got USOs coming in and out of the water all the time, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's a base there. Now, with regards to this, it's not unusual to see one large craft with a hundred small lights on it. Ask anyone who lived in Hudson Valley, New York, and 84 who saw that but this is not one craft this was like 75 to 100 lights like a swarm yeah it's interesting people think this could be starlink but we've seen what starlink looks like they don't go in these kind of separations and sporadic this seems like a cluster not conventional not nothing calculated but they seem like they're organized and we just don't know what it is could they be a uh, some sort of, I don't know, space uh, force up there or something extraterrestrial. Again, maybe even something, again, from the volcanoes. This is exciting footage. It, it just came in this morning. It happened uh, probably about 12 hours ago. Yeah, you know, what's really crazy about this to me is that, you know, it could very well be maybe the U.S. military or something where they're, pra what better place to practice, like, you know, going out in fleets and practicing, you know, new maneuvers than out, outside of Hawaii in the middle of the ocean, you know? So maybe there's like something from our government that they're working on out there, or maybe it's ET in nature and it's a good place for them to come down. You know, who knows? Yeah, I'm counting about 50 individual lights here. And uh, what is interesting also looking at this is that I see that these lights are in front of the clouds. I'd estimate that the altitude of these clouds is maybe about 10, 15,000 feet. So I'd have to say that these lights are, it looks like they're traversing underneath the clouds as I'm looking at this. I added some brightness contrast, but again, it's pretty high up there. Could it just be a swarm of drones? Again, it just doesn't seem this to be plausible, especially given the factor that Puna, again, is just kind of out in the middle of nowhere here on the Big Island. It doesn't have any reputation for a lot of drone activity, especially a massive cluster like this. Yeah, I would suggest if you ever come to Hawaii, check out the Puna area. It's a fascinating, really cool community, great people. But again, they would announce a show. There would be something like saying, hey, guys, we're doing uh, some sort of special event. And uh, again, it's pretty light traffic on drones out there. We don't know what we're looking at. Again, this is pretty exciting. This has been breaking the, the rounds again. New UFO video that just came in out of Philadelphia. Are we looking at a USO here, Blake? You know, um, yeah, we're excited to share it with you, and it's interesting. It seems that what we're about to share with you is still, it still has no explanation. It's been out uh, for the past 12 hours. I'm wanting to uh, hopefully talk to the eyewitness who shot it, but it seems to traverse from the air into the water and then back out again. Here, take a look at this. We'll show you the raw video right now. Original to the left, a little closer, a closer look to the right. Creepy, man. What the hell? Stay over there. Talk up to me. Taking a dip.
So we're watching this. Um, I'm going to get a close up of what we're looking at. The snake blue UFO traversing in and out of uh, this lake, a pond, Philadelphia. Uh, again, we want to lock down the exact location, but people are speculating that this is some kind of biological UFO or uh, maybe something that uh, is local legend. Uh, Brent, your thoughts here. Yeah, it's really nice. There's no CGI. Everything we're looking at is real. Uh, the guy's fascinated. He doesn't know what he's looking at. I'm still wondering how could this be done? Could it be Blake even brought this up when I showed it to him earlier? Could this be maybe a drone holding up some sort of LED lights on a fishing line trying to maybe hide it out of camera at the drone and then drop this, uh, this object into the water and lift it out? But I've never seen anything like this. You know, the first thing my mind falls when I see this is uh, the way that it moves. It's almost like an inchworm. It reminds me of an inchworm, the way it kind of comes up at the end. It's really interesting. And also that's bioluminescent in nature. Um, you know, I don't know, just following up on what you said, Brent. Like, it, it's interesting to me that the end of it will kind of come up almost like a creature. So I don't know how that could be fate, but what are your thoughts? You know, again, it's hard hard to tell if you weren't there. But again, we're hearing the eyewitnesses, and I don't hear any kind of drone in in, in the audio here. I, I turned it up pretty loud to see if I could hear any buzzing from any prop propeller blades, but I didn't hear it. Uh, Dr. J, your first impressions on this video. One of the craziest videos I've ever seen, and definitely look real. Look at the reflection in the water. I mean, look at the clear behind it i first obviously jumped in my mind was is it like base snakes astronaut story musgrave talked about seeing them people in the iss talked about seeing them but i've never heard of something that has like multiple individual lights that, but clearly they're connected with this blue beam or you know uh you know purple ish beam because they're you know one light would be moving to the left the other will be moving to the right but so would the snake like sort of stick and the fact that it goes and touches the water and goes back up, I thought that was really crazy. I also started to think, is this like a spirit, like you mentioned, like some crazy folklore? I don't know. I think it might be biological. You know, it's it's interesting. We brought up the whole aspect of biological possibilities of, you know, these UFOs actually being life forms. Again, the bioluminescent, uh, characteristic of it seems that it could be like a deep sea creature deep sea water um, fish or something but again I I'm not I'm still thinking that this is some kind of drone that you don't see in the shot it's suspending something down into the water and lifting it up it could be like a fishing a fisherman out there trying to bait some fish as, as a possibility I'm not sure I know a lot of a uh, drone is used in fishing nowadays but you know, just going off of what you said, you know, even though this is in a river in Pennsylvania, it's like I, I know there there are a lot of deep caverns all over the planet that go where these waterways go very deep down into these inner parts of Earth. And I feel like in inner Earth, there would be a lot of bioluminescent type creatures that our science scientists around the world haven't even come close to discovering yet. So it makes sense to me that maybe occasionally something comes up from inner Earth, all these deep underwater caverns and appears and you know freaks people out 
I don't know. I think that could definitely happen. You just never know. Yeah, the phenomenon in the world is still a mystery. There's a lot to learn on this planet. What are we looking at? I really like that. It, this thing came down from the sky, entered the, the lake over there in Philadelphia, the little river, and then it came out of the water and went straight to the sky. I see this little axis, which makes me think maybe it's not a drone lifting it up because it's at a tilt. The axis is kind of pointing a little like at 11 o'clock, which is really interesting. You'd think it'd just be dropping straight. So this is weird. If this thing's all on its own by itself, we're looking at something special. So <laughs> that's what third phase moon is all about. We just don't know what it is. Look at that commercial airliner that went just behind it. Really great perspective. This video is pretty off the hook. I'm still uh, wrapping my mind around it. Yeah, now that I'm looking at this a little closer, Brett, you make uh, some great points there. And maybe there is no drone involved in whatever we're looking at it has its own propulsion and we can't explain what's going on. So again, it's quite interesting. Some people might say it's fake. Some people uh, say it's real. We believe what we're looking at. There's no manipulation, no CGI. We're not putting up CGI videos. And if we do, we're going to call it out the way we see it. Again, even people say Dr. J is fake. And look... We've known Dr. J for about, I don't know, going on 13, 14 years now. He's Dr. J. He's been in the field for such a long time. He's interviewed the top ufologist in the business, in this community. It's, it's quite amazing. Dr. J, uh, appreciate you've been joining us over these past uh, episodes we've been putting up on Third Phase of Moon. Uh, tell people how they could find you. Yeah, you know, it's actually funny when you told me that people were actually saying that because, like you said, I've been working with you guys for 13 years, going on 14. We've been good friends since then. I've appeared in multiple of your videos, literally on camera, and not to mention when you guys use parts of my interviews. But yeah, people can find me on YouTube at Dr. J Radio Live, DRJ Radio Live, and uh, we'll pop the link during the chat tonight, and, and if you can, in the description as well. Absolutely. And uh, everybody go check out Dr. J Radio Live and tell him Third Phase of Moon sent you. Now, and subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. Um, again, we've been working on this comic book. It's getting a major, uh, the ratings are off the hook and the orders are coming in from around the world. Battle for Disclosure. It's a... Uh, it's on Amazon and Kindle. You could order the comic books right now. Brent's working right uh, at the second, as we speak, the third issue. And we can't wait to share that with you. But we're excited about uh, this series, kind of delving into what we think Disclosure would look like if uh, we had the balls. Take a look. Here in Washington, it's 3 p.m. We're following a developing story. Could the military patrol... Well, you don't just have two, three, ten trillion dollars vanish. We've given so far 171 billion dollars. Most of the work being done on this are private corporations. Call this a hybrid entity that's neither strictly government nor strictly private. If these are extraterrestrials are real and they're getting here from another star system, they're not using 20th century or early 21st century technology. People at the CIA call it WSFM. Weird science and frickin' magic. Are you ready for disclosure right now? The second issue, Battle for Disclosure, is available. Amazon kindle download it get the hard copy it's quite incredible what's going on here dr j absolutely you know i want everybody to read this you have to get both of them i'm eagerly awaiting part three and let me tell you why you have to get both of them issue one and two issue one is awesome it lays out the, the framework of the story the drawings are really spot on to what and you guys are going to notice some surprise in there but part two if episode, uh, issue two not only steps it up a notch it literally steps it up 10 notches the part two literally will blow you away so everybody out there please take my word for it you get issues one and two because issue two literally steps it up exponentially Absolutely. And uh, Apollo Asteri has been helping out in this series as well. And we're excited to bring it with you. Your thoughts on this whole process? 
Yeah, you know, I've noticed a lot of the comments from people who have reviewed the book after purchasing it is, or the comic that, you know, it, it really mirrors a lot of things that happen are happening in reality right now in regards to disclosure. And it's really incredible, especially the different characters that come into it and how their agendas play out. It's very interesting. So you should definitely check it out if you want to know what I mean. And how do we check out your channel, Apollo? Oh, you just go to Apollo's Odyssey on YouTube. It's Apollo, uh, not Apollo, Apollo's uh, Odyssey on YouTube. Check it out. Yeah, I just want to, Brent Cousins here, just wanted to say thanks to everybody, all the support out there. I've been seeing it. A lot of people have been just leaving emails from uh, behind the scenes congratulating all of us and me on uh, what we accomplished over here. Uh, yeah, working on page 20 as we speak. Uh, just around ready to wrap up the third issue. And uh, I can't wait to share it with you. It's so exciting and it goes down uh, kind of like a, as big as a Hollywood movie you could ever see. So I can't wait to share it with y'all and appreciate all the support. We're seeing the sales, it's off the hook. That's right, it's available. Again, we're gonna be supplying the link and uh, the channels to uh, Paula and Dr. J. Everybody, if you've captured anything amazing out there, don't hesitate, upload that video to YouTube, any social media, copy paste that link to my email. It's in the description below. Keep your eyes on the skies, everybody. Be safe. We'll see you next time. Over and out. We'll catch you next time. 10-4.